Hey everyone, this is Mark Rapilio with Hockey Ministries International bringing you another video chapel. Once again, today's special guest is Jerry O'Sullivan, the chaplain to the New York Islanders, and he's bringing us the second installment of him working through Psalm 34. So if you'd like to follow along, grab your Bible or device, open up to Psalm 34, and let's listen to Jerry as he takes us through God's Word. Psalm 34, day 2, verses 4 through 7. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. You know, if you play any sport, especially at a professional level, you must be disciplined and practice disciplines that hone your game. The same is true when it comes to faith in God. We need to practice spiritual disciplines to grow and get better at a relationship with God. Spiritual disciplines like Bible study, scripture memorization, meditation, journaling, public and private worship, prayer, those are all examples of spiritual disciplines. Now, if you'll accept the challenge and take a few minutes a day to memorize and meditate on Psalm 34, it will change your life. You will have less fear, anxiety, and confusion. God will show up and you'll get answers to your prayers. Now, those are some bold statements, but I really do believe that that's what can happen if you let the Holy Spirit work and use this scripture. We read in verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. When we did diligently seek God, when we do that, he shows up and will deliver us from fear by revealing himself to us. You know, one of my life verses is James 4, 8, which says, come near to God and he will come near to you. This is a reminder that when we look to God's word, cry out to God in prayer, he will respond, but it takes us seeking God first. Verse 5 says, Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Now this verse made me think of the story of Moses coming down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments in Exodus 34. In verse 29 it says, He was not aware that his face was radiant, literally glowing because he had spoken with the Lord. Now what happened in Exodus 34 was a miracle that took place then, but I still believe that even today, when we spend time with God, when we're in his presence, people can tell. We not, may not be physically glowing, but we can still be radiant, able to smile, engage others, lock eyes with people that can tell we have been with God. You know, the one thing about our face is that it makes it very special, is that it always tells the truth. Your face does not lie. If you're fearful, anxious, scared, it's written all over your face. Also, if you're confident, hopeful, joyful, you don't have to say a word. People can tell just by looking at your face. What would happen? What, what would people uh, discern about you right now if they were to look at your face? What are you radiating? The key to radiating hope and positivity is directly connected to spending time with God. Over and over again in this psalm, we're told that God is listening for our cries for help, that we're not alone. He will respond and help those who fear him, who have put their faith in him, trust in him, have submitted to him. This poor man called and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. And when I read this psalm and I, I read the words, this poor man, I thought of myself the challenges I'm facing, and, and God's promise to save me out of all my troubles. But what really gave me hope was this image that I'm not alone in my troubles. I love the image here of the angel of the Lord and how he encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. It made me imagine an angel, not one of those naked baby angels with tiny wings, but one of those 10-foot tall angelic beings right here next to me, watching over me guarding me, guarding all of us who believe and fear God, protecting uh, people uh, all around the world, including professional athletes, wherever we are. 
Those that fear the Lord, believe in him, have faith in him, and are protected in life and even in death. Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We'll know that the Lord, we know the Lord when we know his name. And his name, I believe, is Jesus. Call on him now, wherever you are. Ask him to come into your life. To heal you, to save you, to deliver you, not just physically and financially, but also spiritually by being with you. That the angel of the Lord would encamp around you and bring his peace into your life. Pray now. Call on him. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Lots of good stuff in that video, Chapel. But the thing that, that struck me was that how he said, you know, God will, will come to us, but somehow he likes us to draw near to him. In fact, that's a Bible verse. It says, draw near to me, says God. He says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So it's a promise that when we take a step towards him, he takes like a million steps towards us. If we draw near to him, he promises to draw near to us. So let's, uh, let's pray that we would have the courage and the open hearts and open minds to draw near to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, help us to do that. Help us to draw near to you, knowing that you have promised to draw near to us. We may feel it, we may not, but we know that you are. So help us, Lord, to draw near to you and look around and see where you're at. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again, Jerry. Like I said, that's uh, installment number two. Number three is on its way. I hope to have you join us.